Back in 05, people still called them the Aints. Season tickets were down 40% over two years. There was talk of a move. San Antonio, maybe LA. Then it hit the costliest natural disaster in American history. The magnitude of the situation is untenable. It's, it's actually, it's just heartbreaking. When I went to the dome and I saw the, the water everywhere and the people and the, the crisis that was going on, it certainly became the symbol of despair. The widespread belief was that the Superdome would be demolished and the Saints would move away. There was, however, an alternate belief. Governor Blanco, she, I think early on, came to recognize that the psyche of the public was critical. And she also quickly came to understand that the Superdome and the Saints could be a critical piece of that. Governor, people are out of work, people are homeless, and you made a decision to fast track a football stadium, why? Every time they talked about the hurricane, the cameras panned the rooftop of the building, and it just, it represented our heart being ripped out of our soul. And I felt like if it stayed there for any length of time, that it would also take the heart and the energy out of the individuals who were trying to rebuild their businesses, who were trying to put their homes back together. Was this a symbolic decision or an economic one? If we lost the Saints, it meant that we lost a lot of tourism money. It meant that we lost jobs. And I didn't want to be a governor, the governor, who allowed the Saints to leave. Gradually, a long shot vision took shape. Keeping the Saints would require two things, saving the dome and the blessing of team owner Tom Benson. I remember talking to Mr. Benson when he was negative about the likelihood that the Superdome could be salvaged. I said to him, Tom, I may be right that it can be done. You may be right that it can't be done. But right now, the one thing we have to agree on is we have to try. Paul came to me at one point in time and he said, Governor, if you can get the dome open, I will make sure that Tom Benson does not leave the city of New Orleans. I said to Doug Thornton, what's your timeline? He told me it would take over two years. We probably couldn't have it open until maybe January of 2007. And I said, you can't wait till 2007. It's got to open for 2006. Because if they play elsewhere, you'll never get it back. And his comment to me was, you give me turf and make it safe for the fans and we'll play football. And I just, I said, Paul, it's a deal. We hadn't received the first penny from FEMA. We haven't hammered the first nail, but yet we've committed to play football by September. My own staff thought we were crazy, or I was crazy. I said, okay, Doug, let's go. You've got it, let's go. We just thought that if you had a dream, you should try to make the dream into reality as quickly as you can, and the people made that happen. They did it. Yeah. They really did it. There were 850 men and women working here, six days a week, 10 hours a day, who live in this community, who wanted to rebuild the stadium, and they knew that failure was not an option. There was such a spirit, it was electrifying. They were inspired, and they were working with a common unity of purpose. Last year, so much hopelessness inside this arena, it's been replaced by the sounds of hope and rebirth. This was a group of trumpeters blowing that New Orleans is coming back. A joyous night in New Orleans. Let the party begin. So what came of Katrina? Well, contempt for the impossible, and a team that found where it was going by going home.